kind of see up there, we have our exit pipes for the whale um, up there. Um, with those, like I say, with John's plan, we were able to figure out how many pipes we need and how much water we've got to run. My name is Dave Maynard. I'm a project engineer with Turner Construction in Seattle, Washington. The project is the U240 Capitol Hill Station. Uh, it's a project for sound transit. Uh, it's extending the light rail system from uh, the existing light rail system, and it's working north. It's a continuing process. They're working on more stations going north. Uh, there's stations at University of Washington, and the light rail actually goes all the way down to the airport in SeaTac. And this is one of the, the many stations in the system. My role out here is a project engineer for the concrete side of things, uh, the structural work put in the concrete, and Turner's also the GCCM on the project as well. The items that we're using out here are the Intellirock sensors. Uh, we're using maturity sensors out here that are logging both the temperature and the data of the concrete, uh, maturity data of the concrete. In this case, we're using it to measure our mass concrete. Uh, this job has a lot of mass concrete in it, and so we need to measure our temperatures and, in this case, maturity. We're using maturity sensors and not just the temperature sensors. Uh, the maturity sensors are giving us that extra bit of data to confirm our strength. Uh, in this case, it's very important. Uh, we can't strip our forms until we get to 90%, so it's very important to us that we're up to strength and it's very important to the owner as well. Uh, so it's good to be able to show multiple ways uh, or multiple ways to confirm that we have the strength, if it's from cylinders or if it's from the maturity data in the sensor. Uh, we've been able to have those multiple points of data to prove that we're where we think we are. In this case, we have to stay under 145 degrees maximum temperature and we have to make sure that our concrete also doesn't exceed a differential of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're using the sensors to measure and record that data on an hourly basis over 28 days per our specifications. We're using it to make sure we meet the contract specifications and to make sure that we are following our thermal control plan uh, appropriately make sure the concrete's doing exactly what we think it's going to do. We start by developing a plan to figure out where those sensors need to go, figure out which parts of the concrete we need to measure. After we have that plan, then we know where those sensors need to go. So we can go outside, we can tie these sensors up uh, to the rebar cage or to wherever they need to be. In this case, we use the rebar to support our loggers. Uh, we install them in, in the wall and in the whale tie them up to the rebar, run the wires for those sensors back up and out, uh, exposed above the pour so that we can get back to them later. Uh, we'll place the concrete around the sensors. After the pour is done, uh, then we'll go down and we'll check the sensors periodically to check the temperatures, the maturities. We'll take the readings, we'll bring them back upstairs, we can download them into the computer, and using the program we can look at and develop graphs on the maturity of the concrete, the temperature, the temperature differential, all the important factors that we need to see with the concrete. At the end of the day, when everything's said and done, those loggers are still active for up to uh, at least two years, we know for sure. We have loggers down there from a previous contractor that we can still connect to and read. Um, the information never changes, it's always stored there, so at the very end we can go down and take that last reading. We can clip the wires short and we can pour them into the concrete. Nothing's exposed, nothing was ever there, but we've got all the information we need. Then with the match gear box, we bring it up on the, the surface and we have it right next to our, our tester or our inspector. Uh, we'll keep it warmed up to about 73 degrees, we'll keep it plugged in and in the auto cure cycle at 73. We'll make the cylinders and set them in that box. Uh, when the pour is all said and done, we'll get that box moved down to the pour where we can hook it up to one of the sensors that we want to uh, mimic and the box matches the, the concrete temperatures um, and then we can go down and pull cylinders out of it periodically when we need to, to take a test break. Um, and we're able to, to use that and get that better break as opposed to uh, uh, a field cure or under the blankets or anything like that. Well, this helps the project in that uh, we've had a couple instances where we've been able to adjust our uh, system, our mass concrete system, to make sure we don't go over our specifications. We've had instances where our temperature is getting too hot and we're able to know that when we go and check it so we can crank up the water or we can put blankets in the appropriate place. Uh, it actually helped us avoid uh, some non-conformance uh, issues because we were able to recognize problems ahead of time uh, if it wasn't agreeing with what our plan was gonna do and we were able to see that that was happening, we were able to make a corrective action uh, before, we, before we exceeded our specifications. Uh, so that was definitely a benefit um, and on top of that, it. Uh, it's an easy system to use to report all of the data that we're supposed to report to our owner, um, including uh, charts on the hourly basis, the mass concrete reports, uh, the comparison between our max and differential temperatures. It includes very good tools for us to uh, provide that information to the owner in, a, in an easy to read uh, 
format without having to do a, a whole lot of extra work. Uh, the other item that we have out here is the Intellirock Match Gear system. Uh, we're using that, again, to help prove our strengths. Field cures and test cylinders that are cast by our inspecting agency uh, have a lot of variability in them, and we can't always uh, ensure that we're going to have a good break. We could have variability as much as 2,000 PSI in some cases on this job um, between cylinders, and that causes a lot of unease uh, with our owner especially in that, well, maybe we had one cylinder at 4,000 PSI, but we had two at 6,000, and we're a little bit leery about that. Um, the Match Gear box has been able to let us better determine what the, the strength of the concrete is in place. Mass concrete uh, is brilliant in that it helps concrete mature faster. And the, the extra heat of that mass concrete does help us mature and get the strength faster than in a, a normal concrete placement. And with the Match Gear box, we're able to directly tie into one of those sensors, uh, in this case, the edge of the concrete. We can tie our box to that. We can match the temperature of that in-place concrete, and we can have cylinders that better represent the actual in-place strength condition as opposed to a cylinder that's sitting on top and maybe didn't get insulated quite correctly under the blanket or uh, other problems. It gives us uh, a much better and uh, more reliable way, really, to confirm that our concrete is, uh, is at strength and uh, reap, you know, gain the benefit of mass concrete and show that we can get to strength sooner. And we have actually been able to reduce some of our form removal times. Uh, in this case, our job is related to both strength and days, not just strength, but we've been able to use that box to show our concrete gets up to strength sooner and help reduce those form times so that we can cycle uh, faster than we might have otherwise been able to using field cures or anything else. It saves in all places. It saves on the, the material that we're renting, the form rentals. It saves on our labor in that we can uh, cycle faster. We need less people um, with our systems that we have in place. Uh, it saves on our indirects. We don't have to keep our staff around as long. Uh, it saves our subcontractors, uh, our mechanical, electrical, our coordination because they can come in faster. The faster we get out of the way, the faster they can get in and do their work. And it reduces the overall time of the job. So, uh, I mean, it helps in, in all facets of the job.